How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Transformers review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Generations Voyager class Brainstorm figure. Now, this figure came out in 2014, part of the Thrilling 30 line. And when I saw this guy at BotCon last year, I was really excited. Um, I really thought that Hasbro did a great job giving us this nostalgic looking figure but with a you know a nice updated look and um, the whole gimmick being um, still part of the figure which was really cool as far as the headmaster and being able to transform into the pilot also of the vehicle really cool but unfortunately when i finally got this thing in hand last year the headmaster gimmick didn't really work too well um which kind of is disappointing because he's a headmaster. You need to be able to get this headmaster off of the body. And that's where the problem lies. And there are modifications that you can do to it. It's just simply shaving down the sides of the headmaster head. Um, G1 Hexron did a great video on it. And I'll put a link to his video in the description if you haven't done it yet. Real simple, again. But Hasbro decided that, you know what? Um... They heard the Transformer community about it and decided to re-release Brainstorm with a new modified Headmaster there. So it should pop off easier. And um, we're going to see. We're going to see if Hasbro stayed true to their word. But the packaging here is exactly what we got with the original release. We get a nice picture of Brainstorm. You get to see Brainstorm there in robot mode. But you can kind of see that he does have these rubber bands around his head. That signifies that you have the newly fixed version of uh, Brainstorm there. Spin it to the back here. We get to see a nice picture of him in robot mode, vehicle mode. We get to see his little headmaster, which is Arcana from the original um, G1. But I'm because this is IDW inspired, I'm not sure if they go with that. So it might just be Brainstorm in his transector. There you go. Nice little bio, and then we do get his tech specs, which is one thing I really wish that the Combiner Wars had, but oh well. All right, another little maybe slight um, way to know if you have the um, fixed version or not. I mean, the obvious one is the head there, but there is a machine stamp right down there, as you can see above the C1602A. The original doesn't have that um, at all. So I don't know if that's just another way of finding out or if that's just, this is the case lot number that it belongs in. I don't know, but oh well. All right, let's take a look at the... All right, here's Brainstorm in his vehicle mode, which is a Cybertronian jet plane, um, like Starfighter type look. Looks pretty decent. Um, could be better, I will admit. Uh, the kibble on the back here, but if you're familiar with the original G1, it's... It's just a carbon copy of what we got with that, uh, with the legs swooping underneath, arms on the side, guns on the front. But I do like the amount of paint apps we got. We got silver there, silver on the guns, tampographed Autobot symbol, silver there. The headmaster can be the pilot, which was fantastic that they were able to incorporate that. Retractable front landing gear, so not too bad. Bring in the original. And you can see the cues that they took, um, legs again, guns and all that, even to the stickers, um, the Autobots stickers on the uh, wings. Maybe could have made the wings have the little guns maybe on the side, but yeah, oh well. And speaking of guns, let's take a quick look in comparison. The original, solid, kind of aquamarine looking color, but with the original, you actually had to have a left and right, the other side being hollow, which is unfortunate, especially when you're trying to get this guy complete. But for the new release, you actually get the exact same um, design on each side. There's no left or right, and you get the nice silver paint apps again. So, All right, let's take a look at the Headmaster. All right, so here's the Headmaster now, and I do like the amount of detail that we have with such a small figure. You can see the, the smirk there on his face, the nice orange paint, the yellow on the crest piece there, even the detail on the chest. His arms, unfortunately, are just the side panels of the head. They can rotate around 360 degrees, but you do have some, you know, some detail within the inside to actually showcase an arm, which I do like. 
Legs can go forward. Uh, they can go back. We do have movement in the knee. They're not as fragile, but I would be kind of careful with them. Um, I mean, like the original, the arms would pop off. You have to be really careful with that. But um, you do have movement in the, the head here. It's on a nice ball joint, so you can look up, down, um, side to side. Not too bad. All right, bring in the original. As you can see, he is quite small, especially if you're familiar with Spike here. So, all right. Transform him into his head gimmick, um, or into the head. Now, you don't have a little plate like on the back of the original to um, kind of hide the face, but yeah, it's all right. So what you're going to do is just rotate his legs down like so, and there you have the head. Not too big of a, not that hard of a transformation, but um, this is where we're going to see the modification that Hasbro did. Now this being the original, I'll bring in the first release, and as you can see there on the side of the head, the reissue actually has this oval shape kind of piece right there where the original has this circle and that's what is going to allow you to dislodge the head from the actual transector easier and that's it and that this is where you would shave down anyways if you um, were going to modify it other than that there's no other difference except maybe it seems like there's a tad bit darker shade of orange on the first release on the um, mouth plate there so all right now let's transform the transector here simple transformation zoom out a little bit and you're going to take off the weapons there track the landing gear and untab his arms like that and then get this out of the way untap his legs there they're just plugged in the back kind of move these side panels out of the way kind of bending his legs a little bit so you can move the front part of the plane around and it's just going to plug in right down there like so open up that panel to reveal his feet rotate his arms around like so let me adjust my camera really quickly Open up his this panel, his forearm to reveal his hands. All right, let's add the head now, and one last, I guess. Um, throwback gimmick that Hasbro incorporated with Brainstorm here is the fact that when you put the head on, you're actually going to reveal the tech specs like the original G1, which I thought was really cool. Open up the canopy so you can see a little better, but it's on a spring, so you just pop it on and there you go. And there's the originals you can kind of see. Really nice. Now, this being the fixed version, uh, the head is on there i mean you can remove it how you remove it is the fact that you just push down on this gray piece and it just kind of dislodges it but it's it's really loose in there i think they went a little bit too far because you can pop it off without even um using the actual um, release button there and he is i mean as you can kind of see really loose and that's not from the actual joint in a way i mean it is a little bit and you can tighten that by just adding some, you know, 
clear nail polish or something, but there is a tendency for this head to just kind of pop out on its own. So, but as far as articulation, you have a nice range of motion with the head. You can look down, up, because it's on a ball joint, the next on a ball joint. So um, the arms can rotate around 360 degrees in and out the shoulder. You got a double um, elbow joint, bicep swivel, nothing in the wrist except for what we got with the transformation. Legs can um, move forward and back. You can get these little pieces out of the way. So you do have a little more range of motion, nice ratchety joints um, in and out at the um, hip there, thigh swivel, knee joint, and you do have some rotation in the um, feet as you know, swivel side to side and all that, which um, very nice, very poseable. Give him his weapons here. And he can either hold his weapons or you can, if you like, store them on the back. Like so. Which is pretty cool. I do like that. Some really quick comparisons. Here's the original G1. And I'm sure there's a sticker sheet out there if you really want to make this guy look more G1. But I think he looks fine the way he is. Here's another Voyager class figure, Springer. And you can really tell that Brainstorm's on that in between stage of Voyager ultra class size. Um, I really do hope that Hasbro will give us some more headmasters, especially Decepticons, but with the Combiner Wars happening, it's probably not gonna happen for another three years probably, but here is Deluxe Size RC. And um, just for kicks, here is the original first release. And obviously you can see there's no difference. And, um, that's it for uh, Generations Brainstorm. Definitely a well worth pickup. I really do like the engineering. I like the way that Hasbro designed this figure, implementing the Headmaster gimmick as far as giving us the pilot and all that. I do like that. Um, but really, is it worth going out and picking up the fixed version? No. Um, I'm sure a lot of us already have this version and have already modified it, so it's not a big deal. But if you don't have this in your collection and you like updated versions of G1 characters or you're a chug collector, definitely worth picking up either one. Um, I'm sure you can get this guy cheaper, though. This guy's still going for full price at retail, which is um, kind of ridiculous. So um, that's it. So thanks, everyone, for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stay tuned for more. Take care, and I'll talk to everyone later. Bye.